Response and explanatory variables. We are studying bivariate data. That is data where we have collected two pieces of information from each person or each you know, situation. So if I recorded for each person here the time it takes them to get to school and how they get to school, that's two different pieces of varia, bivariate. So recording two different variables. So those two variables generally are linked so they belong to the same person when I check how you got to school and how long it took you to get to school. And variables, of course, are things that can change and they're usually the things we're trying to investigate. It's very important in the statistical investigation process that we understand how we can use information to make decisions about what is best for the world around us. If at Daramalan we discovered that more students than anything else were catching a bus, we might want to make sure there were bigger bus bays, more staff members on bus duty, so we can make decisions about how best to do things based on data. And we're going to learn a lot about associating two different variables. Now, when we're looking at a link between two variables, we usually have what's called an explanatory variable and a response variable. We used to call these the dependent and the independent variable, that one depends on the other. So the explanatory variable, or EV, is what we used to call the independent variable. It goes on the x-axis of a graph or table and it explains the change in the other variable. So the distance I live from school explains the amount of time it takes me to get to school. Some variation in the response variable can be explained by the variation in the explanatory variable. So we expect variation in the explanatory variable to explain changes in the response variable. So this is our old independent variable. The response variable, RV, sorry, I should have left more space here, is what we used to call the dependent variable. It goes on the y-axis of graphs. And changes in the response variable can be explained by what was happening in the explanatory variable. So the sentence that you usually want is how long it takes to get to work is explained by the distance I am from work. When we're trying to work out which one is explanatory and which one is response, oh and I should say here this one responds to changes in the explanatory variable. So in each of these questions, we'll be looking at which one is the response variable and which is the explanatory variable. And often they'll come with questions. So if I was investigating, do older people sleep less? Then I'd collect a bunch of people and I'd ask them for two responses or two answers their age and average time slept. So these are our variables. This is our investigative question. Now, 
One way of working this out, if you're not really sure, is to say it both ways. Does your age explain the amount of time you spend sleeping? Sounds good. Does the amount of time sleeping explain your age? If I sleep for 10 hours, am I suddenly 37 instead of 41? No. It doesn't work as well going back that way. Age probably explains time slept. And when we look at this, we're saying, does our age explain sleeping less? So the, the way our question is worded also gives us a clue. So age is our explanatory variable. Time slept is our response variable. Investigate any relationship between kilojoules consumed and weight loss. Which is response, which is explanatory. Do the kilojoules I've consumed explain my weight loss? Yeah. Or does the weight loss explain the amount of food I'm eating? Less so. You can often say there's an argument for going both ways, but you're looking for the one that works best. Probably kilojoules consumed explains weight loss. Kilojoules is my explanatory variable. Weight loss is my response variable. Sometimes there's no obvious sentence that works. So can we predict people's height from their wrist circumference? Our height and wrist circumference. Which one is explanatory? I could easily say taller people have a greater wrist circumference or people with a greater wrist circumference are taller. So the question is what's happening here? Can we predict the height from their wrist circumference? That means the wrist circumference in this example is the explanatory variable and the height is the response variable. If I'd asked it the other way, can I predict people's wrist circumference from their height, then they'd be the other way around. So it's about what is the expl explanation and what is the response. Does the time it takes a student to get to school depend on their mode of transport? So we have to identify the variables, the time it takes to get to school, and the variable mode of transport. And remember our old language of depend on? The time it takes to get to school explain, is explained by the mode of transport. You think about it the other way. Does how I got to school explain how long it took to get there? Yeah. I got the bus, it took longer. Getting the bus explains the fact that it took longer. Does it took me an hour so I have to catch the bus? No, it doesn't work as well. So look at them both ways. The mode of transport. Does the time it takes depend on it? Remember, we can still use the dependent. Time it takes depends on. That's dependent. It's the response variable. Mode of transport. Explanatory variable. So it's really useful to think of it both ways around. This explains this. See if that sentence works. If it doesn't work, try it the other way around. See if that sounds better.